So my 3D printer gave up on me, just when I was about to test print my own files. So I've splashed out on a new Mars 3, a very handsome budget machine, and here's my thoughts. Take them or leave them. I love the thing. Prints are coming out creamy smooth, failure rates are nice and low, the supports are coming off lovely and easy and the speed of the print is so nice after being on an RGB printer. I'd say print times are less than half of what I'm used to and I am loving it. And obviously I'm growing in experience since my first machine, but it does feel like I'm fighting with the Mars a lot less. There you have it, my extensive highly detailed first impressions. It's good, very good. Video done? I should say more shouldn't I? It wouldn't be fair to do a direct comparison between the Photon and the Mars because of the price difference and the age difference, but there are a couple of design choices that have nothing to do with print quality that I do have an opinion on. I thought I'd prefer the hinged door configuration that the Photon S and the Photon SE use, rather than the lift off lid that you see on the Mars and the Photon Monos, but after using it for a week I actually prefer the lift off lid. It allows you much better access to sort of the inner workings of the machine, it's easier to keep clean and easier to change things if you need to. It also seems to make a better seal around the printer so less of the fumes escape. Another slight difference is the Mars's resin vat lifts clean out once you undo the screws. The Photon SE style chassis has hooks that go over the top and I also believe the Anycubic Pro does as well. When I was sliding in the resin vat I always felt worried that I was going to scratch the screen or damage the FEP in some way. Being able to fully lift the resin vat out does alleviate that stress. The Mars 3 came with a metal scraper as well as a plastic one and a pair of snips that I was not expecting. It also came with a year of Chitubox Pro which was a nice surprise. Obviously the final quality of your model will also depend on the sculptor that you've got. Here you can see a couple of different studios, some put a lot more detail into the models, others go for a more fantasy stylized look. At the end of the day, it's up to you as the person that's making these to decide if the increase in price is worth the sort of quality that you'll see. If you're the sort of person that can see the difference in these miniatures and wants to have that slightly higher fidelity, and it would bother you knowing that you haven't got quite the best that you could have, I'd say spend the extra money and go on a 4K printer, maybe even an 8. However, when you put these on a table, your players won't take a second glance, they won't care. And if that's something that bothers you, maybe don't spend the money. This is something I did for me, because I personally will notice and I'll take great joy in seeing the change, and that's why I'm happy to do it again, and maybe in the future, maybe even go up to 8K. Thanks for making it to the end, I really appreciate it. If you're a tabletop fan and a 3D printer, I might have something you'd like. I'm gearing up to launch a couple of Kickstarters in early March. One of them's going to be a hunter slash adventurers camp with a lot of bed rolls, tents, animal traps, maybe even some hero traps. And the other one that's probably going to get released first is a load of dining room furniture from peasants to nobles, which I'm just adding the final detailing to now. Both sets will be pay what you want, so anything from a pound and you'll have the entire set. Go to theforgeofmanythings.com and sign up for the newsletter and I'll let you know when they launch.